Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. I'm so happy I thought I lost this or that uh, the evil X took it or I gave it away during one of the move and I found it again. Clean your room, guys. Look at the stuff you find. Okay, this is absolutely one of my favorite uh, art books ever. Soul Eater Soul Art, the illustrations of uh, Atsushi Okubo. And uh, what I like about Atsushi Okubo <laughs> is he's kind of like a pep talk in the form of an artist. Because if you look at his early illustrations, the, like the thought is, oh man, that's the guy where I, I like the post on Tumblr, <laughs> but I don't retweet it. Like, try hard, try harder, and one day you'll earn that retweet. Uh, and then he like, I don't know, like he found his groove or he found his mojo or something. And he just... Uh, I, I, I can't even say he developed a style. I just say that his style is let's try everything and mix it up in a comp in a way that's almost indescribable. Like there will be elements of si 1970s psychedelic posters and his own kind of like slightly creepy off-putting uh, manga style. But then he'll lean into the creepiness for the creepy vibe of the whole world or he'll like really bang out some like gorgeous like... Uh, illustrations that kind of like are taking info, in, inspiration from like fashion books. So he clearly looks at a lot, a lot of reference materials. He'll do like really disorienting landscapes where the perspective is all warped, but it all has this great funky vibe. He, he really is just a guy who's constantly about reinventing himself. And he actually kind of bags on himself a bit. So uh, this is 100% a high recommendation, uh, especially if, I mean, if you like Soul Eater, of course. You, well, the reason I recommend Soul Eater is it's basically the story of Maka, who's a gunner, straight-A student uh, misandrist, who learns to not be a misandrist and work with all the boys on her team. And I like it when we teach girls not to be misandrist. That is a really good moral message. So uh, I did kind of like the funky cover hold on a second i'm gonna take this out so i don't hurt it that much so it kind of like overlaps it in a cool neato sort of way look on the back okay it's just the just the verbiage all right i'm not going to show everything of course because i want to appease the copyright gods guides and this is a high recommendation but i am going to like flip through chunks of it so you can get a feel for it so kind of by the time he gets to his later it's, it's so funny how like I get such like My Hero Academia vibes from this now because there is a very like strong, uh, you know, concurring, recurring themes to Shonen Jump stories like the school kids and the school kids all got to learn to get uh, work together and work for the good of Japan and learn the code of Bushido and control the superpowers, right? Like the, the Shonen Jump story is a story about teaching young people, boys and girls, uh, how to get along and how to like make your way through, through life. Uh, so I'd say his later style... Uh, this is him kind of like, uh, I guess, emphasizing uh, light and shadow using almost kind of a vector quality. So he'll literally outline the shadow and the diff distinction between light and shadow with thick black lines. So it kind of highlights that that distinction. Uh, and But then you go back to his early style, and it's just like all kind of like off-putting anime eyes. Like, like uh, Okubo is the guy your art teacher was afraid you were you would be if you only drew manga and your your art teacher was half right like if all you ever do is copy dragon ball z poses you're not going to learn how to draw because you're only copying one type of thing but there is a lot of even though a lot of manga is stylized a lot of it actually is artistically excellent it's just uh and it's not all the same like not everybody draws like Sailor Moon, not everybody draws like dragon ball z you you can find variety in uh the industry but his early work has clearly got like this sort of weird off-putting vibe to it. And, but then he'll kind of like, I, I guess like direct it almost to a creepy series, you know? Eh, eh. Okay. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, kind of like color, oh, color pencils in his early work. And then he just start does stuff. So uh, bright, this, these aren't lurid colors. I think lurid colors, the definition of that is everything is at the maximum intensity, maximum intensity and nothing gives you any rest. So here, I'd almost say this is a little bit more American comic book uh, inspired coloring where, you know, like Native Americans in old comic books are always pink because that was the closest they could get to kind of a copper skin tone. So he uses a bright pink, but then his green isn't the brightest green. It's a bit more of a kind of calm blue green, right? But then uh, Black Star's hair really pops out because they're co complementary colors, that kind of that kind of great stuff. And then you jump ahead and he just keeps doing different stuff. Okay, so like big, big over-the-top 70s letters, like crazy 
uh, distorted landscapes that leave you a little uh, feeling off put, like crazy, evil, ugly dudes. <laughs> it's everything. I dig that. Jumping ahead, then he'll do like graffiti art and a lot of his like little stickers and illustrations clearly take inspiration from graffiti from the doodle. And then like more sick, like like he's actually figuring out like how to pose his characters and all that kind of great stuff. Or he'll like mix in some traditional Japanese calligraphy for some cool brush effects. It's great. Uh, jump in ahead. But da -da -da -da. Okay, here's what I was talking about with kind of like the more... These are uh, covers for, I know these were the co covers used for the uh, American releases of the manga. So he's now using kind of a soft, softer colors, uh, just portraits on a white background, but putting a lot of uh, care and detail into like the, rip the ripples of their clothes, but they're not 100% Realistic. It's almost like uh, Renaissance artists who would, they would like cake cloth in plaster so it would hold still and they could draw it, which is why a lot of the, you know, like the billowing, rippling cloaks in those old paintings look a little stiff or squarish, even if they're flying through the air, because they were literally kind of like almost frozen in place to, to let them actually draw it. And I don't know, it gives it kind of a weird, funky... That, that's it. It's all weird and funky. He's weird and funky. Sometimes he draws kind of ugly, but because, he, and this is really where it's all at. His little doodles, where he's just trying stuff, like, and sometimes Maka will show up, or Death the Kid or Soul or, will show up, or the little devil will show up, like the characters he's actually working on, you know, like his moon, his evil looking moon thing, his crazy death castle with like the silhouette so that the whole sky becomes like a death mask. <laughs> he just tries a whole bunch of stuff, but then he actually takes this stuff and he works it into the broader world to give his more polished sequential art the same, uh, I don't know, like spray painted on the side of a wall in like a kind of a creepy but also really cool part, part of town vibe. Later, there's a whole bunch of, yeah, okay, even more of this. Like, what if I draw with lots of little sketchy lines along the outside? What if I draw with really clean lines and simple shapes? What if I draw, like, uh, th this with more uh, cal calligraphy, calligraphy brush style? Uh, it it's just great. What if I draw more in the anime style? And, 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 like I said, like, I never 100% say, oh, what a, what a perfect face. Like, that's not a very good face. But who cares? Like, back to the crazy skulls and stuff. And... Uh, another neat thing about Maka is she actually has like defining moments. So her first defining moment is finding out that she can trust men. She shouldn't hate men in general. And her second defining moment is failure, where she's a A plus gunner student. She defines herself by success. But the first one of the first times she's in the battlefield, uh, she freezes up and her partner nearly dies pr protecting her. And th this is a short source of a lot of guilt for her. Uh, throughout the series, and this is kind of a big motivating factor for her to re really just learn how to relate with men. There, there are other girls in the show, but I think that the, some of them are there for comic relief, or uh, they they aren't, at least in the anime, they aren't that prominent. I think most of the key relationships is how Maka figures out how to relate with uh, the guys on her team, specifically, and kind of like navigate those waters. It's a great young girls coming of age story. Uh, the, the ending's okay. People tell me that the manga ending is better, and I've been, I, I've been waiting to sit down and, like, I, I'll have to buy it, I guess, to, to actually read what happens in the manga. I, my only quibble with the ending of the anime is I felt like they put too much emphasis on Maka's character when the whole show, up to the ending, was all about, uh, you know, team cohesion and kind of like a military unit, you know, gradually building up their rapport. Kind of thing. Okay, here's like some of this cool psychedelic stuff. Like all of the, these uh, braids of hair are a simple shape with a one strong color and then like a weird undefinable something that's kind of creepy yet the cool, bright, fun colors kind of undermines that. More calligraphy br br brush, people getting jankety eyes because they're getting all beat up. And then back to like clean styles and uh, thick outlines with kind of a sticker vibe distorting his proportions. He does everything. All right, and then he does, like, a whole bunch of cool, like, oh, yeah, this is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, Atsu Sushi Okubo plus uh, Full Met Metal Alchemist. Uh, Hiromu Arakawa is the Full Metal Alchemist. And they just drew this at a convention together. Him collaborating with Studio Bones, him do designing video game characters, and, like, I don't know what this is, Biishi, I think. I think it was his series before Soul Eater, so I, I don't know anything about it. But, oh, he really, really had the 
uh, ugly ma manga face bad back then. All right, afterward, I sure have drawn a lot, haven't I? I'm never truly satisfied with any of my art, but it feels good to see so much of it collected into one book. Sorry I don't have anything better to say. It's just my honest opinion. Thanks for checking it out to the very end. Atsushi Okubo, thanks to you. A sound soul dwells within a sound mind and a sound body. He tells a couple little stories of like what the collaborations were. I might get yelled at for saying this, but I drew this so I can use it for my PC desktop. I missed that. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, what a fun guy. You know, just going to conventions, like <laughs> getting excited for uh, do working on a video game. Wow. All right. Uh, the, the award for most improved goes to Atsushi Okubo. If you have a weird, ugly style, you can be an artist. You just have to lean into it. Don't, don't fight it. Figure out what you're, what you're doing artistically. Uh, fig look at it critically and decide if it's ugly. I, like, I think his old work is just ugly, <laughs> period. But then once he, kinda, once he started mixing in like his doodles and his creepy factor into it, he made something utterly unique, and I dig it. All right, number one Marmaduke fan, I love you guys. Catch you later.